Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a loom version um, that's been simplified. This is not a literal translation. This is a an, an simplification and a little bit different of a way to do it. Um, but it's based off Elizabeth Zimmerman's <coughs> surprise baby jacket. But because it's going to be in loom knit and we're going to be doing it differently, um, I'm going to actually categorize it as the origami sweater. Um, and what I'm going to be teaching you is how to make the sweater from here up, okay? And what makes it origami is that you're making one big panel and you're going to sew the shoulder straps together, okay? Um, the skirt part is an addition on this particular design and I've done a picture tutorial on how to do that, um, but I'm not doing a video tutorial on how to add the skirt part to it okay and this is done on the 160 now what I'm going to show you is how easily it is to transfer from the 120 loom to the 160 loom okay so um, it's going to work up the same I'm going to work up to where it's not a skirt it's just an actual sweater and I'm making it for um, an actual baby okay so this one's for my daughter and um, I'm using the 160 now. She has a 19 inch chest. And so, um, on the 160, you can work it up to a 19 inch chest. But keep in mind, you're going to do either a seed stitch or a garter stitch border all the way around the garment. And I'm going to be using, um, 20 stitches to do that. So if you're interested in using the 160 and you have a child who has a 19 inch chest, um, you can use the 160 for this, and you can do 20 stitches to do a garter stitch, um, or seat stitch border all the way around, and it should fit, okay? That's if your child has a 19 inch chest, alright? You can make it on the 160. Now, I'm doing a baby size, so I'm going for, I believe, 14 inch chest, okay? So what you do to set up either one of the looms, the 160 or the 120, is you take out two of the wedges, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to max out two of the wedges on the opposite sides of each other, okay? So this is cleared of wedges, this has it, and this is how you set it up the exact same way on the 160. Max out those wedges to the very edge as far as you can take it, okay? You work in the 160, do the same thing. Now, our starting point isn't going to be here. It's going to be here, okay? So what you want to do is you actually want to do a chain cast on. And the reason being is when you do a chain cast on, it'll be easier to sew up your edging. You also have an edging you can work from when you add back to the loom to do the sleeve area and um, it just so it just makes it easier when you're doing your um, border to have something to work from if you've done a 10 stitch this is easy to add a border all right so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a chain cast on and you want to um, do a slip stitch short side in front long side and back push away Stick your finger up through the hole, grab the working yarn, not the tail, and pull through and tighten. Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to find your first peg, which is right here. Wrap it around the back. Pull the working through yarn through the hole and pull and tighten. Send behind it and tighten. Keep in mind, this is going to be a flat panel, all right? So what you want to do is you want to go in and cast on all the way, all the way around and stop here. Now keep in mind, this is a flat panel, all right? So go ahead and chain cast on all the pegs and then we'll get started. And I'm going to do this <clears throat> entirely in 
um, stockinette because I'm going to be doing a textured border that will flatten out the edges. Um, but if you do not want to do that, you can do a garter stitch. Okay, you can do a garter stitch on the whole thing. And that's what originally was done on um, the surprise baby jacket. It was done in a garter stitch. But I'm done it in a stockinette and I'm going to do um, either a cedar garter stitch border, okay? Alright, so pause the video, get your cast on done, and then we'll go from there. Okay, and then when you get to the last peg and you have this loop here that you've been working with, just place it on that last stitch. I mean, that last peg. Alright, <clears throat> you should have a break between the first and the last peg here. Okay, now we want to start working our actual sweater and let me tell you this is actually easier than you think but you need to get proficient at your increases okay because there is more um, should be about the same decrease number of decreases as there is increases but if you wanted to do say this sweater um, dress part of it then you better get proficient with your increases because the skirts entirely increased okay um, so that's the thing you want to be proficient with your increases okay now what we're going to do is we're going to do around where we're going to go and knit and this is the start of a two row set that you're going to do over and over again no matter which loom you're using the 120 or the 160. so what you want to do is slip that first stitch every time you start a row always slip it and always knit the last stitch you're creating that chain so that you can knit the garter stitch border easier okay now what you want to do is just go ahead and knit your way around There's basically a two-step process to doing it. Now when you start doing the increases, it gets a little bit more complicated when you start to go in and create a neckline. Um, but it's not that much more complicated. Okay, we're reaching back to our beginning of our knit row, and it's always going to be um, one row between your decrease. If you're wanting to do a garter stitch, this should have been a purled row, okay? And on your decreasing and increase row will always be a knit row, okay? So our first row, we did a knit, or if you're doing a garter stitching, it's going to always be a purl when you're coming back the other direction. All right, now to complete the two row set, the next thing to do is decrease, wedge decrease. Okay. So you take it down one slot. Move your stitches over. And now you want to knit the row and then when you get to those pegs you knit both those stitches together, okay? So slip the first stitch as you've been knitting. And if you're doing the garter stitch, remember you always knit the last stitch. And even on your purl row, always knit the last stitch, okay? You want that chain to make it easier to make a border. Now go in and knit this row. There you knit the two stitches over. 
and knit your way around. Okay, this is a two row set. This is the second row of the set. You're going to repeat this two row set where you keep decreasing by every other row and knitting and purling every other row until you cannot move your wedges anymore. Okay, you can't move them down anymore. And then we'll be ready for the next section, okay? So I'm going to tell you to pause the video and complete this two row set until you decrease down to the middle where you cannot decrease any more and then we'll start on the next section where you're starting to increase and then I'll show you how to do the neck area and everything okay so pause the video get your loom down to where it needs to be and then we'll move on to the next section we have decreased all the way down to the middle and um, this is the same thing on the 160 okay now we're time time to increase okay and what you want to do is you want to figure out how many increases you're going to be doing remember to eliminate the six on the side and then divide that by half okay and for us it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten increases so I'm going to do five and then I'm going to do my neckline and that's how you're going to decide on your 160 so you count over and then divide it in half all right so I'm going to do five and then we're going to work a neckline so I'm going to show you how to do an increase and do a two row set increase so increase on one row knit the next row okay and you're going to do that for five row for five times and um, then you'll be ready to do your neckline and then I'll show you how to finish up this section and then we go to the next section okay so what you want to do <coughs> slip your first stitch knit your way over to the wedge okay increasing becoming really acquainted with it you want to take about that previous stitch right there you can see it there's a previous stitch you want to pull it back all right and you want to have your working yarn on the inside of them when you pull this back so that you can go in and place it in front of the peg and then place that stitch right back where you had it okay now you have an obvious stitch that you've created here you want to pick that up and put it onto the previous limb then you're going to knit both the wedge pegs okay then you want to pull this stitch back this previous stitch place the working yarn in front of it and then place it back you can see the stitch you created because it is blue going to pick it up put it onto the previous peg and then knit that peg you're going to take and loosen your washer and pull this back to the next set of pegs so that you can move these two stitches you just created this one here and this one here and now you should have two stitches you just increased now I like to go in and snug up my stitches so that you don't get it so much looser than your um, decrease okay so you snug up your stitches all right you want to start over here and then work your way over all right now you want to do is just knit your way around to the other side and increase on the other peg okay we're to the other wedge I like to go ahead and push my stitches down as I go along and you're going to do the same process pull that previous stitch back while having your working yarn sitting on the inside of the loom place the working yarn in front of the peg place that stitch back where you had it and pick up the stitch you just made and move it to the previous peg knit the next two pegs there then take 
and pull the previous stitch back on this peg, place it over, move that stitch you just made to the previous peg, and knit over. You may question as to why instead of doing both the wedge pegs for an increase while you go over here and do this. If you want to continue to keep it even and looking the same as your decrease, you have to allow for there to be two stitches knitted in between your increase. And you do knit two stitches before you do another increase on this one. So if you're wondering, that is why. Release your washer, push it down to the next set of pegs, take the stitches off, place them on those empty pegs, go in and snug up your stitches. And then finish knitting the row. At this point, you will be ready to do your knit row back. So you slip that first stitch and then just knit your way back around. This is your next two set um, two row set you'll be working. Okay. And you'll be working it a um, total of five times. So once I complete this you'll need to do it four more times. Okay. And then we work the neck area. Alright. So, go ahead and pause the video and complete your five sets of increase a row, knit a row, and we'll be ready to start the neckline. It's not that tricky. Um, this really isn't a bad pattern on the X loom to do, okay? and. Um, if you're doing the larger one, remember count how many increases you have, divide it in half, and do that many increases so that you have that many left to do your neckline area, alright? It's the same thing. Now, the written pattern link for you to be able to get it will be in the info box below like I do everything. And that way you can know exactly how many that you want to do for the 160, okay? But um, this is a easy pattern if you stick to just the basics, okay? Right now I'm working on a version of this and making it into a sweater dress. And that's a little bit more complicated and requiring some taking the stitches off the pegs and putting them back on and increasing out again and binding off. And it's a lot more energy in that version. This is going to be a really basic version, which isn't bad. So pause the video, get your rows done, and we will come back and continue. Okay, we've reached our halfway point on our increases, as you can see. And now we need to actually do our neckline, okay? And we're going to continue the process of increasing every other row, even as we're working in the neckline, okay? So if you're doing the 160 version, you're going to do a total of 60, I mean, not 60, but 10 um, bind offs, but they're going to be split up. It's going to be, um, what is it? It's going to be seven bind offs on the 160 on the first rows, and then um, three more bind offs on the second set of rows. What, with this, we want to get a total of eight. So we want to do a total of um, six bind offs to start. All right. So if you're doing the 160 version and you're at your halfway point, then you want to bind off a total of um, 
seven, I think. Okay. And if you're doing this one, you want to bind off a total of six. All right. That's four. Here's five. One more will make six. Okay. So make sure you got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pegs are empty. Knit your way around to your wedge. my stitches down then you want to pull that previous stitch back place the working yarn in front increasing just like you've been doing knit the next two stitches pull that previous one back place the working yarn there move that stitch over to previous peg and knit. Move that down. Move those stitches you just created over to those pegs and I always like to snug up my stitches. And then knit your way around to the other wedge. Okay, we're at our other wedge. We're ready to do another increase, wedge increase. So pull the previous slip back, place the working yarn in front, move the stitch over, knit next two stitches. Pull the previous stitch back, place the working yarn in front, place it back, move the stitch over, and knit that stitch. Tighten. Move that over. Move that over. Again, I like to go in and tighten up my stitches and then knit my way to the end of the row okay yes all the way to the end at this point now you want to bind off six on this side just like you did on the other side. Should be your last one. You'll want to count around and make sure that you have a total of 12 pegs empty. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes. So you should have binded off 6 on either side. And if you're doing the 160, you should have binded off seven on either side so that you can bind off three on the next two row set. All right. At this point, because you, when you go back around, you knit, just knit everything all the way to the end. Okay. Okay, we've reached the end. Now at this point, if you're working the 160, you want to bind off three. If you are working the smaller one, you want to bind off two. All right. So 
Go ahead and bind off two more stitches on this side. And then work your way around and increase like you've been doing. Every other row still increases, okay? Okay. And you do your wedge increase on both of them through this round. And then once we finish this, then we'll go back to what we were doing, where you were just doing a wedge increase every other row until you can't do any more wedge increases is where we're going with this, okay? So we're almost back to what we were doing before. And the increases look stretched, but when they come off, they look a heck of a lot better than on the loom, okay? So don't worry. Okay, we're to our other wedge. We need to do our other increase. Just like we did on the other side. We're on our increase row. Knit the two stitches. And then knit the row to the end. Okay. Then you want to bind off two on this one or bind off three on the 160, okay? And this is the knit row back. At this point, you'll have finished completing the neckline, and then what you want to do is continue the process of what you were doing before we worked the neckline. Increase row, knit row, increase row, knit row, until you can do it no more on either peg, on either loom, okay? So at this point, I'm knitting my way around, okay? And then we're going to go back to what we were doing, where we're increasing around and knitting around, right? So I'm knitting my way around, and at this point we're just going to be knitting and increasing every other row and knitting every other row, okay? So it's a two row set, we're back to a two row set, and it works the same like we've been doing, and you just increase until you can't increase any more on either loom. All right. So on this one, you don't have many more to do. On the other one, you'll have a lot more to do. Okay. So um, go ahead and pause the video, complete the increase section, and then we'll move on to the bottom half of the sweater. Okay. We finished our increase out. As you can see, we're as far out as we can. At this point, what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to, um, from this side, you'll bind off to where you have empty pegs all the way here and then you just have your wedge pegs, okay? And I'll show you how to do that, all right? So what you wanna do is you wanna bind off all the way to your wedge pegs, but you don't wanna bind off your wedge pegs, just to them. Okay, so pause the video and get that done, and then I'll show you how to finish up that row, okay? And try not to do it too tightly, okay, because this is the front of your um, sweater. So try doing a fairly loose bind off, but you want that chain in there so that you can do the either garter or seed stitch edging. Okay, here I am binding off. Here I am binding off my last one. Okay, so 
Hit that one. Move it over. That one. Okay. Now I'm done with this side. Okay. Now what I want to do is just knit all the way to the end of the row. Okay. So at this point, I'm just going to knit to the end. Okay, now we've finished this row. Um, basically what we're going to do is the same thing on this side. We're going to bind it off to our wedge and then we're going to knit to the end, okay? So um, you're doing the same exact thing. You're going to bind off all the way over to here, just like you did here and you're going to knit your way over, okay? So um, go ahead and pause the video. <laughs> Bind off to the wedge peg in the, the row, okay? And then we'll start on the last part of the sweater, which is easy, okay? And if you're working on the 160, you do the same exact thing. You bind off to the wedge pegs, you knit your way around, bind off to the wedge peg, and knit your way around, okay? So you should have to have the stitches on your loom still. Now, here's a suggestion I would do. You don't have to if you don't feel comfortable doing this, but to me it's easy. You lift these two end stitches that you aren't constantly having to work this edge, and just place them over here, okay, and that way you don't have to m mess with them coming around the corner. You can just finish it so that you aren't having to twist as much on the loom to do the last rows, okay, and this is just a preference. As I said, you don't have to do it. You can leave them on the wedge pegs if you'd like. Okay. At this point, what you want to do is you can either do um, I you can either do 14 rows. See, this is the bottom back, back bottom. Okay, that's going to go around the the waistband. Okay, and if you want the sweater to be shorter, you want less rows here. Okay, but if you want the sweater to be longer, you want more rows here, okay? So you can do um, 10 rows if you only want an extra inch because you are going to do a garter stitch edge, which is also an extra inch. Um, on the baby size, you may want to do 20 rows. Give yourself 2 inches on the larger size, which is supposed to be toddler sizing. And you're also going to be doing anywhere from a 15 peg to 20 peg um, garter stitch, okay? I ended up doing uh, 20 pegs because I'm working for a 19 inch chest for a two year old, okay? Um, but if you're working this size, which is an infant to baby, you're usually using 10 pegs. So you can do 10 rows on the baby size, or you can do 20. But this is the bottom of it, okay? What you have is to the waist at this point, okay? Once we fold it and everything, you're going to have to the waist, all right? So, um, what you'll need to do is go in and do however many rows that you would like, all right? Um, for this one, I'm going to do... 10 and um, for the t uh, other size I do 20 okay and then um, I'm gonna go in and do a either garter or seed stitch edge now I'm showing a seed stitch edge in another video and so I'll break this up and show how to do a garter stitch edge on these sweaters okay 
um, but what I'll have to do before this video is finished is show you how to sew it together and how to set up a sleeve, okay? Alrighty, so pause the video and just knit for 10 rows back and forth on this size, 20 if you're working the 160, okay? And then we will go from there, okay? Um, if you're proficient with this, once you finish those rows, go ahead and bind off. Loosely bind off because you're going to be adding those bind off chains back to the loom in order to give it a garter stitch edge. Okay? Pause the video. Get your rows done. If you feel good enough with that, go ahead and bind off. Um, and then I'll show you how to sew up. Okay, I have finished my 10 rows and I'm ready to bind off. So what you want to do is you want to just do a standard bind off all the way around. And you want to do it fairly loose because you're going to be doing a seed stitch or garter stitch edge. So what you want to do, and what I'll do, I'm not going to show the edging first. I'm actually going to show how to do the sleeves. How to sew up the sleeve area and then how to actually um, work in sleeves, okay? So that it has an edging because they're going to curl a little too and that should work out fine okay so go ahead and pause the video bind off your stitches and then we'll be ready to show you how to fold the origami sweater and sew it together okay and then I'll show you how to add some longer sleeves to it okay so pause the video get this much done and then we will go from there Okay, we have our base here, as you can see, when you start spreading it out. I'm going to turn it around so that my bind off edge is down here. Okay, so we need to figure out how we need to fold this. Okay, and this will lay a lot flatter when you are um, doing a garter stitch. Okay, so in order to fold it, I need to flip it where the wrong side is facing me okay now what I need to do is I want my bottom facing down which is my bind off edge here okay and then what I need to do is take and figure out I'm going to because here's my neckline right here so what I want to do is fold that over okay and when I do it should line up this corner should line up with this decrease area here okay and then you should see the starting of a sweater okay you want to do the same thing over here where you fold it over And there it is. It should line up. All right. And there is part of the sweater. Okay. You can see that develop. Now, when you go to do the garter um, stitch edging or the seed stitch edging, that completes the sweater. All right. And um, because I did stock in it, what that'll do is go in and stop that curling that's going on okay so I want to go ahead and I want to sew my sleeves up all right so what I want to do is I want to start from the um, outer edge and work my way in okay to the neckline because you can do a lot more hiding of the, your ends and weaving in and that not showing up um, there so what I want to do is thread a needle, do a slip knot at the end, okay, and then what I want to do is find my very edge. So that's fairly loose, so my first chain is actually going to be kind of split up, that's right here, okay. And then I'm going to find the chain over here. 
that's at the very corner, which looks to be about that. It's not an exact science, okay? Because what we're going to do is we're going to add these chains here back in order to do the sleeve, okay? All right, so I find the chain I can work with that's closest to the end, which is the chain that is on the column. You'll see there's your decrease column. You want to do the chain that's at the end of that, okay? So what you want to do is you want to pull through. Mine to loosen it up. Then you're going to stick the needle through the slip and tighten. Now what I like to do with my end is as I'm sewing, sew in the um, end, okay? So what I'm doing here is, now that I've found that, I'm going to go to my next chain, which is actually going to be this blue color here, is my next chain. So a variegated yarn will actually show you your chains a little easier. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to find the next chain here, okay? On the opposite side. And remember, this will actually make it easier to sew up, which is why we've chained everything. We're trying to make sure it's easy. So you want to send the needle through the next chain, as you can see. And then you want to send it through the next corresponding chain on the other side. And pull through. And you just want to make sure that as you go in and sew up that you just are kind of sewing up this tail. So you want to go to the next chain that hasn't been sent through. And then the next chain. And send through. Okay. And then the next chain is a blue chain. And the next chain. And send through. And you pull tight and then you stretch and that keeps it fairly even on how it's going to sit when you have it sewn. If you pull tight and you don't stretch it the other direction, like you can pull it tight here and then you gotta stretch it out. And that's so that um, you don't have it gathering up here and it loose down here. It keeps everything nice and even, okay? And so you're gonna do this all the way to where you don't have any more chains on this edge here and um, that will take you sewing up your sleeve and then you're ready to actually knit your sleeves which means you're going to be adding those chains back okay now in the original Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern um, everything, there is no sleeves. It's supposed to be this, and you could do like a little garter stitch, um, trim to finish up the sleeve, okay? But on the loom, it's going to work up a little differently due to how everything's set up. But, um, the way we do it on the loom actually allows for more options of what you can do with a basic pattern of it, okay? So, I'm calling this the origami sweater, but it is based off of Elizabeth Zimmerman's surprise baby jacket, okay? But I've had to go in and do alterations so that it works nicely on the new x -Loom. Still the basic concept, just different. Um, the bottom and front panels are worked together rather than a whole garter stitch edge is the other difference too. Okay, so there's, there's differences, but, um, I was simplifying it for the loom. We are almost to the end, and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. So, pull it, and then... Okay. And yes, you do have a lot of curling because you didn't stock a net, but you're going to fix that with your edging. Okay. And you will need to block the sweater when you're done. Okay. That 
should be the last chain to add. All right, we're going to pull that and then pull it out. Okay, we're going to tie that off and that sews up one sleeve. Now what you want to do is the same thing on the other side. Sew up that sleeve. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and sew up your sleeves. And then um, because I'm doing the edgings differently, I'm going to show you how to do the sleeves. And then I'm going to tell you which link you might want to go to. It depends on which style you want to do. If you want to do a seed stitch edging or you want to do a garter stitch edging. I'm going to show you how to do both, okay? Um, go ahead and pause the video, sew up your sleeve area, and then we'll go in and actually show you how to add these chains back to the loom so that you can finish up and make a longer sleeve, okay? Um, because this is a baby size, you're not going to have to do as much. You're mostly going to be doing an edge. Um, but if you're doing a larger size, which is on the 160, you're going to have a full sleeve to do, most likely, okay? Because you're working with an older child. And um, so you're probably going to be doing more rows, more um, options on increasing and that kind of thing, okay? So pause the video, get your sleeve sewn up, and then we'll show you how to do um, add these chains back to do the sleeve, okay? Okay, I've sewn up both sides. And now what I need to do is find out how many um, pegs I'm going to need on my loom to do my sleeve, okay? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So I need 28 stitches. So, um, you want to go max out here and max out here. And then, let's see, you're going to go up one here. And one here. Okay, because 28 is just four more than 24. Alright, so you should have um, 28. So you can count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28. So, 28. So, um, now that we've done and figured that out, because of how we want to do it, um, we want the right side facing out, okay? And it depends on where you want your starting point to be, on the top, on the bottom. Um, I don't think it really much matters. Here's your starting point typically. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to start finding your chains. And you want to start adding them to the loom. Okay. So here's my next chain. Add it to the loom. Now I'm going to do another video where you take one half of the chain and use it and um, to create one part of a sleeve and then take the other half of the chain to create another part of a sleeve, like a ruffle. So I'm going to be showing how to do that. Now if you don't want to use both um, edgings, you can go in and add the one closest to the bottom. So the part of the chain that's closest to the bottom, you would want to add. And reason being is that this, that's the side that faces closest. Um, that's the side that's out. If you do the inner chain, it um, you'll have a row of, of stitches that, that actually shows up and you don't want that. Okay. So if you want to go in and get half the chain on all the way around and then go back and add the other half of the chain. You can do that. But mostly what you're trying to do is get the chains added back so that you can start on a sleeve. Okay. And that is your goal here. Okay. I've about worked my way all the way around. Okay. 
And if you are working where it's short sleeve, like I'll be doing on the um, other style, what you may want to do is um, it's not the bottom of that chain. There it is. Um, So you have your chains added and if you want the if you're doing like a shorter sleeve and you want it to be bigger you can do an increase um, I don't think I'm going to do an increase on this because I don't think it's necessary to do an increase so um, I think I'm gonna go in and add these chains the other half of the chains back as I got all my chains in so that I have a nice snug connection between my um, sleeve and my sweater okay and I'm probably only going to do about 10 rows of a garter stitch okay so but I'm going in and adding the other half of the chain back in and it'll be a little snug but that's okay you want it to be kind of snug because you don't want a loose connection between your sleeve and your um, and your sweater you don't want a loose connection and that can create holes if you don't add the other half of the chain you don't have to I'm just saying I would suggest adding the other half of the chain so that you have a real clean connection okay so um i'm fixing to be able to start the next part okay so you know what that looks like all right i think i've added about all the other half of my chains so you you should have the sleeve connected all right and you're going to do the same thing on both sides okay once you um, get to that you're going to do the same thing on both sides okay and add that chain and that one and okay all the chains have been added back in and now what you want to do is um, attach your working yarn and then you're going to um, do like a garter stitch I'm gonna do a garter stitch you can do a seed stitch too um, but I'm gonna do a garter stitch okay so I'm going to go get my white because I'm gonna trim everything in white with uh, with this sweater so I'm gonna go and get my white yarn and I'll be right back I'm gonna do a slip knot of my contrasting color which is a white Okay, and um, toss both loops over. Both halves of the chain over. Now I'm going to show another option of doing a sleeve on this loom, and what that's going to be is. Um, doing one half of the chain creating a actual ruffle and then a long sleeve on the bottom half okay and I'm going to show how to do that so what I want to do is I want to knit a row to get me started and then what I'm going to do is purl my next row okay and you may see the wonderful thing about Cindy Wood Looms. You'll notice the pegs may bend a little on this. It's okay. They have um, a, a wonderful 
maneuverability. I mean, you these don't break easy. I'm always stunned when um, somebody says they had a fine gauge peg break. These are tough pegs, in my opinion, tougher than even the other ones. But I've never had a peg break, okay? But if you don't feel comfortable because it bends the pegs to add both parts of the chain in, as said, you don't have to do it. You could do every other one. You're just wanting to make sure that connection's nice and strong. And last one. Okay. Now what I want to do, because that's my first row, I want to purl the next row. So we're doing a garter stitch. So I'm going to be purling my next row. I'm going to do this pretty much um, knit a row, purl a row for about 10 rounds. Okay. And then I'm going to knit one more row and bind off. Okay. So what you want to do is after you've attached your sleeve, you're going to knit your round to start. And then you're going to... Um, Purl around. So you're going to knit around, purl around, knit around, purl around. You're going to do that for 10 times. Okay. And then you're going to knit one more round after you're purled around because it'll end up putting you back at even, which is a purl. You'll knit one more round and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to bind off. Okay. And then um, you'll do the same thing for the other sleeve. Okay. And then um, that concludes this part of the origami sweater. After I show you how to complete the sleeve, um, then you'll need to go in and decide which edging you want to do. And with this, I'm doing a garter stitch edge. You can do a seed stitch edge, but... Um, it's entirely up to you. So go ahead and complete 10 rows for doing the smaller sizing. Okay, and this is where it varies. Okay, if you have a body to work on, get your um, border done with the buttons and everything. And if you need to gauge how much sleeve you need to do, place it on the um, person and then go ahead and measure how many inches you need and then you need to figure out with a swatch how many garter uh, rows you need to do. Usually it's double what a normal knit, row, uh, knit stockinette would be. Um, a seed stitch is a little more spread out so that's going to be more um, more rows probably, less rows will probably give you more than, like the garter stitch would probably take you more rows. Okay, so for this is do 10 rows on the smaller, but um, my suggestion is to put the sweater onto the child and configure how many inches you're going to need to do this. Okay. If you're making the larger size, um, it's probably going to take you a lot more because it ends up being like a really short sleeve to sleeveless on the sizing. And so you're going to need to basically do the full sleeve length, I mean the full arm length. Okay. And um, I'm going to show you a different style with that one. I'm going to show you how to do um, where you have the sleeve increase out to where it, it opens up the sleeve more and also do a double uh, double sleeve where it's a ruffle on top and then a um, regular long sleeve on the bottom. So I'm going to show that as well. So go ahead and pause the video, get you um, 10 rows of garter stitch and I'll show you to bind off, okay? I have now completed my 10 rows 
and I'm ready to bind off. And the bind off is pretty much the usual bind off. You don't want to do it too tight because, um, you know, your arm is going through um, your wrist and hands going through the end of this. So just make sure you don't do a bind off real tight, just reasonable. Okay, and it's nothing special of a bind off. Okay. So once you complete your bind off, that concludes this section of the um, origami sweater, okay? And then you'll be ready to do the border, all right? So go ahead, pause the video, bind off, do the other sleeve, okay? And then you'll want to either go to the video that is for the seed stitch edge or the uh, garter stitch edge and I'm doing a garter stitch edge for this one and um, so you have the options to do one of those two okay <laughs> 